Okay, so before discussing centrifugal pump, we will see a video on centrifugal pump to just get an idea how it works. Centrifugal pumps are the most preferred pumping devices in the hydraulic world. In this video, we will have a conceptual overview of working of centrifugal pumps. At the heart of the system lies the impeller. It has got a series of curved vanes fitted inside shroud plates. The impeller is always immersed in water. When the impeller is made to rotate, it makes the fluid surrounding it also rotate. This imparts centrifugal force to water particles and the water moves radially out. Since rotational mechanical energy is transferred to the fluid at this charged sides of impeller, both pressure and kinetic energy of water will rise. At suction side, water is getting displaced, so a negative pressure will be induced at I. Such low pressure helps in sucking fresh water stream into the system again, and this process continues. This is the reason why priming is important for centrifugal pumps. If no water is present initially, the negative pressure developed by rotating air at eye of impeller will be negligibly small to suck fresh stream of water. Impeller is fitted inside a casing. So the water moving out will be collected inside it and will move in the same direction of rotation of impeller to the discharge nozzle. Here you can note one specialty of casing. It has got increasing area along the flow direction. Such increasing area will help in accommodating newly added water stream and will also help in reducing exit flow velocity. Reduction in flow velocity will result in increase in static pressure, which is required to overcome resistance of pumping system. Here you can see more details of veins inside impeller. They are backward curved veins with state-of-the-art eye configuration. This vein is extracted from a Curloscar pump model. If pressure at suction side of impeller goes below vapor pressure of water, a dangerous phenomenon could happen. Water will start to boil, forming vapor bubbles and spoil impeller materials over time. This phenomenon is known as cavitation. More the suction head, lesser should be the pressure at suction side to lift water. This fact puts a limit to maximum suction head a pump can have. Careful pump selection is required to avoid problem of cavitation. Current impeller type is enclosed. Semi-open and open impellers are also in use depending upon application. If the working fluid is cloggy in nature, it is preferred to use open kind of impeller, but they are slightly less efficient. Mechanical design of centrifugal pump is always challenging. A shaft is used to connect between the impeller and motor. Since water pressure inside casing is huge, a proper sealing arrangement is imperative in arresting water leakage through shaft casing clearance. Mechanical seal or stuffing box based mechanism is used for this purpose. Impeller is mounted on bearings, but at suction side of impeller, it is not advisable to fit a bearing since it will block the flow. So bearings have to be fitted at the other end. This means impeller is mounted like a cantilever. For high flow rate pumps, a bearing housing with cooling oil is necessary for improving life of bearings. Okay, so that was about centrifugal pumps, just a, just a video, but we will see in detail. So first picture is a centrifugal pump uh, installed at site. So second is the one which describes the 
uh, parts inside a pump. Like we can see the suction side, discharge side. So there is an impeller, which is the one which churns the water. So shaft is uh, driving, which uh, provides uh, drive to the impeller. So other side there will be there there can be either an electric motor. The one the first picture which is showing is with an electric motor. Similarly, we can couple an engine, uh, the engine also for providing a drive. So there is a casing for the pump, uh, as seen in the video. So in this one, just uh, it shows how the fluid enters and the direction fluid leaves. Okay, so we will see the next slide. Okay, speaking about centrifugal pump, this is the most commonly used type of pump which we see in the industry. Uh, any any professional working in the marine sector or in the process sector uh, or in the oil and gas sector, we see, will see the centrifugal pump application in a wide manner. So we will see what is a, because why it is being widely used. Uh, because it can handle both viscous fluid and non-viscous fluid. Okay, so. Basically, it is called centrifugal pump because it works the, by the use of centrifugal force. Like uh, it, the impeller rotates and it creates a low pressure and the uh, impeller area, like at the eye of the impeller. Uh, so this low pressure pulls the pump actually, uh, pulls the it creates a suction. Like because of this low pressure, the fluid from the high pressure reservoir area. Uh, close to the low pressure area. So this is how the suction is created. And when we deal with centrifugal pump, we have to know two factors like NPSH and cavitation. We saw in the video a, a small brief about it. So NPSH is net positive suction head. And uh, we will see what is cavitation. So this is a diagram just uh, showing a water sum and uh, suction pipe. Pump is installed. So the HS is the suction height, or we call it a suction head, and the delivery pipe is shown, uh, and the overhead water tank. So HD is the delivery head. So this pump, when it works, it takes water from the water sump at the uh, bottom and pumps it to the overhead tank. So we will see in detail. So uh, as we already discussed, NPSH. So net positive suction head, uh, we, we may have a doubt what is NPSH. So it is a measure of pressure experienced by fluid on the suction side of a centrifugal pump. So any centrifugal pump uh, will have an NPSH value because that is a pump property. We can call it NPSHR or NPSH required. So this is given by pump manufacturer. They test the pump in ideal condition. Uh, in their uh, room environmental condition. And they give NPSH required for the pump for safe operation. So that value will be provided by pump manufacturer. Similarly, the system, I mean our tank uh, location, our height requirement. So based on that the system, we can calculate NPSH A, which is NPSH available. So suction side pressure less the vapor side pressure of the pump fluid at the point. So that is NPSH A, like oh, what is the suction side pressure uh, minus the vapor pressure of the fluid. So we will not go into a calculation detail right now, but we have to know that there is a factor NPSH uh, required, which will be provided by the pump manufacturer and NPSH available, which we have to calculate for the system. So NPSH available should be higher than NPSH required for safe operation of pump, like to prevent cavitation. We will see what cavitation is in the next slide. So, and there should be a margin, like minimum 0.5 meter or 10 percentage, whichever is higher. Like minimum, there should be a 0.5 meter difference between NPSH available and NPSH required. Okay, so we will see that in the next slides. For example, if we see this slide, we can see on the first picture A, B, C, D. That is a four points actually. So the next uh, diagram is showing the graph of pressure uh, and uh, vapor, vapor pressure is marked uh, in the dotted line. So when the pump is in operation, we can see that the pressure drops. Pressure drops at the 
point B, which is at the eye of the envelope, that is the lowest pressure area in a centrifugal pump at the eye of the envelope. And after that, uh, we can see that the uh, pressure uh, rises. So the bubble formation, when the if the so the graph goes below the vapor pressure, I mean if the pressure drops at the impeller area below the vapor pressure of the fluid, bubbles form. These bubbles are actually boiling. We call it bubble. But water, the fluid is actually boiling. If it is water, water is actually boiling. So which forms bubbles, and these bubbles collapse when the, when it uh, when the pressure rises above vapor pressure. The formed bubbles collapse on the impeller. Uh, it, it is like hitting on the impeller, which creates pitting or removal of metal, uh, huge vibration, huge sound. So pumps which create vibration sound, we know there is cavitation happening inside, which has to be addressed. So that is how that is the uh, graphical representation seen here. Uh, we will not uh, see this video, it's very long. We will go to just to we'll go to the okay before going to the next slide uh, we will just uh, describe what cavitation is cavitation is like see, if you take water if you take water in a glass or in a bowl uh, there is an atmospheric pressure acting on the water so there is one atmosphere uh, one bar we tell it as one bar so in this uh, atmospheric pressure we tell the boiling point of water as 100 degrees Celsius. But if we lower the pressure acting on the water, like vacuum, if we, if we, if we are able to build a vacuum, or if we are to, able to lower the pressure acting on the water, the boiling point can be reduced. Boiling point can even be brought up to 25 to 20, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. So water will boil at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius if, it, if the if we can create a vacuum condition. So this is what is happening inside the pump. At the eye of the impeller, the pressure is lower, lower than atmospheric pressure. So when it is lower, this fluid has a tendency to boil. So that is a vapor pressure of the liquid, uh, which determines the boiling point. So if the pressure drops below the vapor pressure, then the fluid boils, which creates the bubble. So this bubble, uh, again, when the pressure regains, the formed bubble hits on the impeller or hits on the body of the pump, which creates cavitation. So basically, this is the condition. We'll see the next slides for comparison. OK, now based on the water flow, we will see what all types of pumps are there. Three flow, flow are divided into three, like actual flow pump, radial flow pump, mixed flow pump. So first we'll see uh, what, what is the difference. So actual flow pump is widely used where we need high flow rate and low pressure application. Similarly, radial flow pump, we, we, can, we can achieve high pressure with low flow rate. Also, we have a mixed flow pump, which is a medium, like flow rate and pressure will be medium. We'll see in detail. So this is a video. One way that centrifugal pumps can be categorized is by the way liquid flows through them. Three common flow path classifications are radial flow, axial flow, and mixed flow. In centrifugal pumps that have a radial flow design, the impeller causes the liquid to make a 90 degree turn and flow outward or radially from the suction eye to the tips of the veins. A radial flow pump takes advantage of the maximum amount of centrifugal force that the impeller develops. Generally, radial flow pumps are capable of higher discharge pressures, but they don't move as much liquid as other types of centrifugal pumps. In centrifugal pumps that have an axial flow design, the impeller moves the liquid through the pump along a path that's parallel to the pump shank. In this type of pump, the liquid is moved mainly by the propeller action of the impeller's veins. This impeller uses only a small amount of centrifugal force to move the liquid. As a result, the discharge pressure of an axial flow pump tends to be lower than that of a radial flow pump. 
However, an axial flow pump may be able to move large quantities of liquid. Mixed flow pumps combine the characteristics of radial flow pumps and axial flow pumps. They use centrifugal force and the propeller action of the impeller's vanes to move the process liquid. For that reason, a mixed flow pump can develop a relatively high discharge pressure and still move a large quantity of liquid. Okay, so we saw about the uh, three types. Uh, actually, radial flow, which uh, uh, which has a 90 degree flow direction. Similarly, axial flow, which has a parallel flow, which creates a parallel flow, which can achieve higher velocity but lower pressure. And mixed flow forms, which are widely used because it, it can achieve the medium, like flow rate and uh, pressure, it can achieve medium. So the figure which we are seeing right now is an actual flow pump. Uh, there is a propeller, or we can call it the uh, impeller, like uh, there is a drive shaft, and we can see that the flow is uh, parallel to the uh, propeller or impeller. Okay, what is the advantage of actual flow pump? We already discussed. It can achieve high flow rates and it can be adjusted for best efficiency at varying condition. But disadvantage is uh, like uh, lower uh, lower head or lower discharge pressure, and it is not suitable for suction lift because suction lift is like lifting from a tank. So actual flow pumps is not suitable for suction lift, and it is also called as propeller pump because of the shape of the uh, impeller. Like uh, it looks like a boat propeller, so it is also known as a propeller pump. Now we will see a radial flow pump. In the radial flow pump, we can see that the suction comes to the eye of the impeller. If you see the first picture, and the discharge is at 90 degrees. So basically, the flow is churned to 90 degrees, and the, uh, the impeller eye is the lower pressure area in a pump. Okay, so uh, this is the radial flow pump. Just a, a more detailed view. We can see the impeller suction port, discharge port. Uh, this is a diagram of a mixed flow pump, which we already discussed. Okay, now we will see centrifugal pump vertical type. So in the diagram, we can see that the pump is vertical. Uh, this is designed for vertical installation. Uh, main advantage is we can save space. Wherever space constraint is there, we can use a vertical centrifugal pump. And it is used, uh, suitable for low viscosity liquids and uh, we can use it for higher pressure temperature the disadvantage is we need more headroom for installation like the pump will have more height so we we need uh, that height uh, space for installation and the we can only use electric electric motor as drivers uh, not engines or turbines we can use electric motor which is installed on top of the uh, pump body so this is about vertical type now we are seeing a horizontal type pump, horizontal type centrifugal pump. So this is basically used for horizontal installation. The advantage is this needs less headroom, but uh, we need a higher footprint, like the base floor area, we consume more space compared to a vertical pump. Uh, another advantage for this is uh, it is easier for installation and maintenance is very easy because all the parts are easily accessible. Uh, not like a vertical pump. Vertical pump, uh, we this because of the height maintenance is a bit difficult. So horizontal pump has a maintenance advantage, and working temperature and pressure is comparatively lower compared to a vertical type. Uh, and another advantage, it can be coupled to motors, engines, or turbines. So these are factors which determine the selection of a pump. This space factor. Uh, which which drive we are using so what fruit print available in the room space so these are factors which decide which type we go for we will go for vertical or horizontal and the type of centrifugal is submersible pump uh, this is submerged in the fluid uh, uh, it has many advantages we will see a video on the submersible pump
KFB offers you a comprehensive range of reliable submersible borehole pumps and high-performance motors designed to ensure a dependable and cost-effective water supply. Submersible borehole pumps are frequently used in narrow wells, and they are often installed several hundred meters underground. The pump sets are difficult to access. To generate the necessary heads, a multi-stage pump design is usually required. The pump head increases with each stage. However, the increase in pressure also generates an axial thrust which pushes the rotor downwards. The resulting force rises with each stage. To ensure reliable operation, the thrust bearing in the motor must be able to absorb and balance the forces without significant wear. To meet these requirements, KSB develops the UPA Z pump. The back-to-back -back impeller arrangement on a single shaft balances axial thrust, reducing the load on the bearings to a minimum. The radial bearings and casing wearings are made of particularly wear-resistant materials to ensure reliable operation for as long as possible. The respective motors are also developed and manufactured by KSB. In addition to optimum efficiency, achieving the maximum service life is also a priority here. Okay, that was about submersible pump. So where we use submersible pumps, we will see like sewage treatment plants, water well, deep well drilling, offshore drilling rigs, mine dewatering, irrigation system. In the offshore drilling rigs, we can see that the raw water pumps, which are lowered to the uh, lowered to the sea, like uh, the, when the offshore drilling rig moves up, uh, the height varies in different location. So because of the uh, height va variation, we use raw water pumps, uh, submersible type. So the submersible type pumps are uh, dropped into the uh, sea, like uh, using a uh, raw water tower. So that is a separate design. We will not be discussing in detail, but uh, raw water pumps are submersible type pumps which are used in offshore drilling rigs. Similarly, for deep well drilling, for mine dewatering, like water well, where space is less, uh, we use a submersible pump uh, which is submerged inside. It has many advantages, like cavitation is very low in a submersible pump because it lies in the water, uh, we get the uh, static head advantage. There is no suction lift required here because the fluid is inside the uh, the pump is inside the fluid. Okay, now we 